Presence is something that actually kind of confused me for a while as a beginning meditator because I grew up with the idea of presence of mind. And I think most of us will understand what I'm saying here, that, that, that when we, we, we talk about so-and-so had the presence of mind to, to react quickly in this moment of danger, you know, that kind of thing. Um, that they're, they're so-and-so, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, a, a picture comes to mind where there's an old man in a bank with a cane and somebody comes in to rob the place and this old man takes his cane and hits the guy's hand and, and, the, and the gun falls out of his out of his hand and then he takes a cane and hits him over the back of the head and he, he knocks him out and he falls on the floor and the police arrest him. And then they talk about the present, uh, presence of mind that this old gentleman had with the cane. If it wasn't for him, um, everybody would have been in danger and, and uh, the bank would have been robbed, you know, that kind of thing. So I grew up with that idea of presence, you know, presence of mind. Um, and I must have heard it a lot or something. Uh, as being a really good quality of somebody that is behaving in a very, very uh, quality way, you know, in the, in the face of danger, that kind of thing. But so w when I heard of presence from a spiritual standpoint, I was a little bit confused. And I don't know if any of you are with me <laughs> on this or not, but um, it took me a little while to understand what presence uh, really was. Um, and, you know, as, as I learn more about meditation and the idea behind meditation, foremost that it is a, uh, a form or a practice of letting go. Um, and in that letting go, there has to be a great deal of, of presence involved. And presence, um, I think, probably the, the, the clearest way to define it or to explain it, I should say, is to um, look at the moment in between the past and the future, that present moment reality, um, something that I like to call uh, immediate reality because it is immediate, it's happening right now. Um, presence is likened to mindfulness uh, in the same way that awareness is, is likened uh, to to mindfulness, but mindfulness is not just presence, and mindfulness is not just awareness, but it contains these things. And um, there are uh, a number, if, uh, if you've noticed that there are a number of spiritual teachers that don't use the word mindfulness, they do use the word presence, and then there's other teachers um, that use the word mindfulness all the time and don't necessarily use the word presence. Um, and I think the reason they do that is so that there's no conflicting ideas about what is what. You know, but mindfulness is, is really moment-to-moment -moment awareness, as is uh, presence. But presence is being us being aware of, of this, this moment, this, uh, this moment in time that we are not bothered by the past or the future at, at, this, at this particular moment. And um, I really think presence has a, a deserves a, a talk such as this before we actually go into the meditation because it's really, really important. And probably the, the uh, most difficult thing I could see in, in a meditator that has been meditating for a while is that they don't get a chance to, to rest in this present moment awareness. That they use their meditation to uh, review the past or to plan for the future, I mean exclusively. And I know there's, there's meditators that do that. Um, they feel that their meditation time is, should be used to uh, construct their lives, you know, to to to, to um, make their lives better in some way. To you know, uh, do some manifesting, perhaps some visualizing of how they wish their future to be, um, and maybe you know, as I said, to review the past so that these things don't happen again. And if if a, a person can sit and do that for hours. 
uh, easily. I know <laughs> because I've done it before, but that isn't uh, that isn't going to take a person into presence, and not that presence is necessarily the state that we should uh, wish to reside in all the time, but the idea that we can be present while we're thinking about the future, we can be present while we're thinking about the past. This is, this is when we really realize that this present moment reality is um, what we are, it's our true nature, it's, it's who we are. It's our, you know, we can call it our Buddha, Buddha nature or any other, any other words you want to call it, but it is, for many people, it, it is that, that spark of spirituality, you know, being present. And being present while we, you know, knowing that we're present while we're thinking about something in the future. Very, very possible to do, and we'll, we'll experiment with that here um, in a little bit. So, again, the definition of um, presence from a very um, unpragmatic point of view, I guess you could say, is, is that, that slice of time in between the past and the future where we um, uh, are not necessarily concerned about the past and the future, but we uh, can focus something in the immediate reality, something that's really happening. Because anything beyond that is... Um, is the mind. We, we create um, stories based on the past and based on the future. And um, many times these stories are not even our ideas of who we think we are based on the past or the future. But um, these stories are other people's ideas that we've somehow inherited or learned from other people, such as our parents or our siblings or where we grew up or where we went to school. All of these are, are basic stories that we um, solidify throughout our life, including our name, um, where, we, where we live, what we do, um, what we think, all of these things. Control is something that is kind of a a false feeling of uh, security for us. We we all feel like we want to be in control. I would like to be, you know, to be completely honest and open. I would like to be in control of this broadcast that the camera works and the computer works and the 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 timer works and you know all of this stuff. I I I would like to have that in control. But the problem is if it if it if something would fail and I would lose it. That means that I'm depending too much on that idea of control. You know, if, if we um, we want control, um, but when something isn't going our way, uh, we can it can be devastating for us. And we many of us experience that on a day day to day basis, moment by moment basis. Um, people that have anger issues, um, temper problems, you know, these kinds of things. But control. Um, is so important from the standpoint that we should really understand the things that we can s sort of be in control of, such as our our moods, um, the 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 reactions that we might have from our our thinking process, um, actions of uh, of speech, actions of body, and you know from uh, and very much so from the actions of, of our mind as well in the area of thoughts. And it takes a great deal of awareness, you know, to be able to to notice our thoughts and to be able to change our thoughts. And that is, that is a product of presence, to be very, very present. And um, as, I, as I said, the, the failure of control can be devastating for us, you know, especially if it has something to do with our story not going the way we want it to go, you know. So, um, and and consequently, when we uh, when we talk about letting go, uh, which is a very important part of meditation, um, a lot of times people ask, "Well, what what should I be letting go of?" And of course, we want to be able to let go of of any attachments we have. But the greatest attachment um, is um, generally con the the control that we feel 
that we must have or the control that we wish to have. And that includes the control of the body and, and these types of things too. So we want to be very, very, very much aware of that. And to, to watch this control and to be in control <laughs> of this control, uh, another pun, um, is to have a great deal of acceptance. Ac acceptance for um, the, the things that are not in our control. Uh, you know, such as, you know, some very simple things are like the weather or our car starting every time we, we turn the key or push the button, you know, to, um, these types of things. To, to have control over, I don't know, maybe as a parent to have control over our, our children, to have control over our, our pets. Um, I always had a feeling that some people like dogs over cats because they, um, they like to have the a little bit more control over their animals. They like to, dogs are a little bit more controlling. You know, they like to be trained. Cats can be trained, <laughs> but it's not an easy task. You know, so that, that's just something um, that I always thought was a, a part of um, kind of a subconscious kind of control factor for a lot of people. It, we should almost make it laughable when something doesn't go our way. Because we can complain, but every time we do complain, that's just the ego stepping in. That's the ego stepping in and saying, um, uh, you know, uh, you thought you were in control and, uh, and now you're not. And um, you might as well just, you know, lose it <laughs> or whatever. But if we can, if we can uh, be very, very present and notice that things aren't going our way, um, we can really relax that. And one of the, one of the factors in doing that is, is being able to understand that there's a reason for all of these things happening. I believe that there everything, there's, the reason, there's a reason for everything, for what it is. There's a lesson behind everything. And the other, the other factor is that whatever is happening now, um, let's say we, um, we open our computer and it crashes. That seems like a very immediate reality thing, you know, and we could have problems with that, you know, um, that we, you know, our, our computer doesn't work, we have a lot of work to do, and it's just not, our, it's out of our control, and, and we, we lose it. We have to keep in mind that 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 moment, even though it feels like I'm very present and I'm still, uh, I'm still pissed off at the situation, that that moment is soon going to be a part of the past. And we will look at that moment from, from the present moment again and see that we got by it. It, was, it wasn't as big of a deal as we thought at that moment. So, you know, these are just a few things that we can only really look at and notice while we're present, and that's why presence is so important. And you've probably heard all this before, but this lesson is still, <laughs> it's still for you. If you, you might say, I, I, I've heard this, um, I've heard Eckhart Tolle talk about this or, or some other spiritual teacher, but that doesn't mean that you're getting it. If there's any kind of problems in your life, that uh, uh, you're finding difficult in, difficulty in, it's because of this lack of presence. That's, 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 the, that's the bottom line. And um, I'm not uh, saying this to put anybody down or to lift anybody up, you know, that, uh, that understands presence more than the other person, but presence is just our own, our, our state of being. That's what we are. We are present. Everything else is mind-made. All of our, our problems of the past are memories. We can, we can bring them up, rehash them again and again, um, and all of our plans for the future, whether good or bad, they are, they are mind-made. And oftentimes these are uh, the stories. We can have stories of the past and stories of the future. And, and if we look at these and realize that these are stories, it, it, it changes the whole texture of it. Because again, sometimes they're not our stories, they're not our, our idea of who we are. And a lot of times when we break that, 
when we break that chain of, of believing these things about us, it's like it's it, it's like discovering um, that we're walking out of the matrix. I have to use that because it's such a popular term these days. But it's like like like, like we're breaking out of the program of our own mind that, that we've been um, literally brainwashed with. And it all starts with presence. That is who we are. That is our true nature. Um, in, and uh, especially as meditators, you know, we really, really uh, want to understand that. These are some of the worldly benefits of being more present. And just see if any of these resonate with you. They are better concentration and focus, better execution and attention to details that matter, especially under pressure, kind of like the presence of mind that we talked about earlier. Vastly improved listening and memory skills, able to distinguish what is important and what is not, able to work much smarter, better conflict resolution, more persistence and increased effective ability to learn, wiser, clearer decision making, especially in the moment, greater capacity for a genuine emotional, emotional connection with others, very important, and life and relationships with people becoming easier and more fun. So I think a lot of that is um, is just becoming you know better people, better people, people, <laughs> uh, better listeners, you know, better communicators, um, having more patience, perhaps. So what would your life be like if you had maybe let's just say fifty percent more presence in your life? And, and it's possible, you know, to have 50% more presence. And meditation is the training ground for all of this. I think we, we probably all know that. Otherwise, we, we likely wouldn't be here. You know, in meditation, we set up our area, you know, for, um, to make things easier for us. We quiet the room, um, make the, maybe dim the lights a little bit, um, get comfortable, you know, hopefully a nice temperature in the room, uh, and we make the conditions right for us to do this training, which we're going to do in just a couple of moments here. And we practice on the cushion so that we can take this off of the cushion. Um, if we couldn't, if it didn't do any good for us off the cushion, um, I wouldn't be here, and most of you probably wouldn't be here either. Although meditating can be very, very, uh, very relaxing and very calming, very stilling for the mind, calming for the body. But to be able to take it off the cushion is the primary thing. That's why, that's why we practice. So I will be guiding us through this and then there will be um, some silence. Uh, I think silence is very, very important in a meditation. And um, the silence is when we hopefully can really get an idea of how this present should feel for us. So this is a practice in, um, in presence meditation. I invite you to come to the breath for a few moments. Follow the breath, if you will. So we want to use the breath as a tool to calm the body, to still the mind. And just to rest for a couple moments. For some of you, this might be the, the first meditation that you've done today. And it's, it's like a signal for the body when we close the eyes and set the intention to relax. It's, it's a signal to the body and mind 
that this is a special moment after all that we've been doing all day long. Depending on the time zone that you're at, But in the U.S. here, Mountain Standard Time, it's, it's evening. Time to unwind. And perhaps one of the better times for us to relinquish the, the past and the future for a while. So for the next 20 minutes or so, I ask you to give up all control. And this is not easy since control has always been important to us. Feeling that, that this control is security. But we actually pay the price for not allowing ourselves to rest in the present moment for fear that we might miss something, that we may drop our guard and be ill-prepared for what may come. But at this moment, just trust. Trust in the idea and the feeling that you want to experience the present moment reality as, as deeply and as lovingly as possible at this moment. So right now is the time to set aside all control even if it's for the next 20 minutes only. Just set the intention. So I'm asking you to flip the switch. set your intention to relinquish all factors in time. No concerns for the past, no concerns for the future. No concerns for anything at this moment. So at this moment in time, you are a representation of still presence. You are free from the need to control anything, especially in the area of time. You are not time bound. And every aspect of the past and future is mind made. We can use time as a very valuable tool. We can use it for our growth and for planning. But to find the switch is the key for our inner peace and to be able to, at times, safeguard our own sanity.
So in doing this practice, take advantage of the body, the electromagnetic energy that's, that causes the feelings within you. So tune into the, the feelings that you're experiencing right now within the body. This aliveness within the body. You can tune into the body itself. You can use the breath if you like. Some aspect of the body As long as you're focused on this, you are present. This is happening now. You're breathing now. You're feeling this aliveness in the body now. So use this energy, this feeling, and allow yourself to really become sensitive to it, if you like, and stay with it. Gently breathing, noticing the aliveness. this alive awareness. Notice if you're present. You're hearing my voice, but you don't have to listen. Just tune into the body. No place to go, no place to be. Notice the freedom in not needing to be doing or being, not needing to be anyone or anything. There's no story here. Nothing to uphold, nothing to prove. You are alive and living in this moment. And this is all you have. This is you. You can define who you are from this place of presence. And in this place you are alive and you are free. You have to trust this and even if it means to temporarily let go of any responsibilities or anything else that you're hanging on to. Just temporarily being able to let go of these things. So even from this place of presence, you can use the tools of the past and the future, if you like.
And you can safely do this as long as you recognize that you are present, that you are resting in this presence, this moment in time, and that there's nothing else. So you can still feel and have emotions as long as you recognize the story of the past that you yourself is presenting to you. And that is seeing these things as a story the past and the future. From this place of presence, this immediate reality, one can safely visit the future as long as you know that you're purposely using this as a tool. You are a creator. You can prepare for the future. You can take care of business and be responsible while being present. It takes self-awareness and knowing that you are using the future as a tool. And it's a knowing that the future is not real, but it's just a creation of the mind. The same with the past. The future will likely not unfold as planned, but planning and dreaming can be valuable as long as it's known that all of this is being done in the present moment. And at this time, if you feel that you are present, you can feel the body, you are in this moment, you're here and now, Go ahead and visit some aspect of your, your past. Maybe a few moments ago, maybe earlier today. Visit the past while staying grounded in the present moment and see how that feels for you. See if it takes away from the, the seriousness of, of the story. That you are in possibly more aware and more in charge of what the mind has in store. Bring yourself back into the present moment. Maybe anchor yourself with the body awareness, the breath. Perhaps feeling the aliveness within the body. Knowing that you're present, think of something in the future that you would like to see happen. knowing that you are present at this time, but you're thinking about something in the future. It should be a different texture than, rather than getting lost in the future, lost in the story. 
you're thinking of the future, but you're doing it in the immediate reality. Now bring yourself back to the present moment. And know that if you can do this while sitting and practicing your formal meditation, that this can be done at any time of the day, work or play. So just rest in the present moment. Be very keen and aware of the movement of the mind. Know that it will want to wander off into the past or future, or even into fantasy if you're tired, but mostly past and future. But do allow some of this to happen but remain present and see if this works for you you're not allowing the mind to drift off aimlessly but we could call it functionally going into the past or future And if this doesn't work, just remain present. Sit with the breath. Sit with the body. Realize this is your true nature. This is who you are. Let go of the stories. Let go of any control. In meditating like this, we're not trying to control the breathing. We're not trying to change anything. We're not even trying to stop the thinking process. We're being as present as possible, keeping the mind still, being very aware that the mind wants to go into the past or the future. And if we're on top of it, we can allow some of this to happen and remain present. Just knowing that we're slipping into the past or future. Being aware.
Ask yourself, do you feel like you are present? This is something that we may fail to ask ourselves throughout the day. It's a good habit to get into. Am I present? Am I aware that this is the only true moment in time? I invite you to take a little deeper than normal inhalation of the breath. Wake the mind and body up a little bit. Do this a few times. Nice deep inhalation. Maybe sigh it out. Bring your palms together in front of your heart, if you like. May each one of us and all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May no harm come to us. May no difficulties come to us. And may we all meet with spiritual and worldly success. May we have the patience, courage, and understanding to meet and overcome any problems or difficulties that we might face in life. Thank you.